Hello guys, welcome to H2O, the A to Z of Chemistry. I'm Dr. Ritu Johar, your educator for this course on hydrogen and I hope you are enjoying this course with me. So today we begin with lecture 3 from the course but make sure you watch the previous ones before winning this one. In the last lecture we talked about in detail the position of hydrogen in the periodic table where we discussed how hydrogen is similar to the alkali metals as well as to the halogens and at the same time it is different from these two groups as well. So it is a unique element and it should be placed separately rather than placing with the alkali metals in group 1 or with the halogens in group 17. Now we will be continuing this discussion further. We will be talking today about the isotopes of hydrogen. And this is going to be a very simple lecture for you people to understand. Nothing difficult at all. But this is going to be a very important topic. Why important? Because if you look at the previous year examination questions, you will be seeing many questions coming from the isotopes of hydrogen. For example, if I talk about 2020 January J mains examination, from all the sets, there was only one question asked from hydrogen and that was related to the isotopes of hydrogen. Similarly, the 2019, if you look at the J mains examination questions from the January section, you will be seeing that in each of the papers, there was one question asked from hydrogen and out of these, there were two questions in two sets they were from the isotopes of hydrogen. So you can understand that this important topic, but a very simple one. So let us begin the learning today. So as we begin with the learning of the isotopes of hydrogen, uh, well, we will be starting with the definition of isotopes. I hope you all remember what are isotopes. You have been studying it from class 9th. We've also had a discussion on them while we were talking about the course, some basic concepts of chemistry. So there we talked about isotopes, isobars, isotones, etc. So I hope you all remember, but in case you have forgotten, just to brush it up, let us quickly see the definition of isotopes. So isotopes, they are atoms of the same element having same atomic number, but different mass numbers. So the essential condition is that they should be having the same atomic number and when the uh, atoms they have the same atomic number they are going to be atoms of the same element okay so hydrogen this has three isotopes now what are these well the first one is protium which is h11 which means what? This means that hydrogen has the atomic number 1. Mass number 1, this isotope is called as protium. Next we have is deuterium, which is H21. So here hydrogen has the atomic number 1. It has to be 1 because it is hydrogen. And the mass number now this is 2. This is also represented by the symbol D and this is also called as heavy hydrogen. The third isotope is tritium and this has the symbol H again with the atomic number 1 and mass number 3. This is also given the symbol capital T. Fine. So these are the three isotopes of hydrogen, protium, deuterium and tritium. So let us learn a bit more about them now one by one. So the first isotope of hydrogen, this is protium, which has one proton present in the nucleus with one electron orbiting around the nucleus in the 1s orbital. Now this means is that there is no neutron present in the nucleus and therefore this is the simplest atom in the universe. I hope you all remember while we started with the discussion on hydrogen. In lecture 1, we said hydrogen, this is the simplest element known to us. Why is it simplest? Because there is no neutron present in the nucleus. So now what I'm telling you is that there are going to be three isotopes of hydrogen and it is going to be only protium which has no neutron in the nucleus. The rest two isotopes, they are going to have neutrons in the nucleus. So if you have a choice, Choice, you should be able to wisely select okay if there are only elements given you have hydrogen which has no neutron in the nucleus but if there are isotopes of hydrogen in the choices then you have to wisely choose protium to be your answer which has no neutron in the nucleus fine now so protium this is represented by h11 hydrogen symbol with one 
uh, as the atomic number and one as the mass number. Now, protein, this is the most predominant form of hydrogen constituting 99.984% of the sample of natural hydrogen. So, again, the commonest form of hydrogen is going to be protein. Now, the next isotope of hydrogen this is deuterium this has one proton and one neutron in the nucleus with one electron orbiting in the 1s orbital around the nucleus right so here we have one neutron present along with one proton this is represented by the symbol h12 so this is atomic number one this has mass number two this is also represented by the symbol d and this is also called as heavy hydrogen why heavy hydrogen the common commonest form of hydrogen protium this is going to be lighter in mass than this type of isotope right so therefore this is called as heavy hydrogen now another important thing is that this occurs mostly in the form of hd what this means is that when we are going to have a natural sample of hydrogen on earth what we will be seeing is that hydrogen is going to be always present in the molecular form it will be always present as h2 right dihydrogen two atoms combining to form a molecule now if we have only protium it is going to be h2 but when deuterium is present it is present in the form of hd generally you will be thinking that it will be present in the form of d2 just like h2 for protium right so it is not present as d2 it is present generally in the form of hd one atom of deuterium combining with one atom of protium to form a dihydrogen molecule fine i hope this is clear now if you look at the percentage composition 0.0156 percent of the terrestrial hydrogen is going to be composed of deuterium which is quite quite less as compared to protium and if you want to separate deuterium from protium how are we going to do that we can do that by physical methods i will be just now discussing more about it on the next slide the third isotope of hydrogen this is tritium this has one proton in the nucleus and two neutrons right so you can see the three isotopes they are all having one proton present in the nucleus the difference is only in the number of neutrons protium having no neutron deuterium having one neutron and tritium having two neutrons in the nucleus right now another important thing about tritium which we can represent as h13 atomic number one mass number three or with a capital t is that this is the only isotope of hydrogen which is radioactive okay so the radioactive isotope of hydrogen is tritium and this emits beta particles you can see the reaction that is happening over here hydrogen is breaking up into helium and emitting a beta particle so this is a beta particle being emitted by the radioactive tritium and if we look at the composition of a natural uh, sample of hydrogen we will be finding tritium to be the least found atom one atom per 10 to the power 18 atoms of protium will be finding tritium so very 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 less you can say as compared to protium the natural most common form of hydrogen right so we have three isotopes of hydrogen protium deuterium tritium this is the most common one this is called as heavy hydrogen and this is the radioactive hydrogen so as i was just now telling you that we can separate deuterium from protium in a natural sample of hydrogen uh, by physical means there was a scientist Harold c u ray who got the nobel prize for first of all separating deuterium by the evaporation of liquid hydrogen near its triple point 13.9 kelvin under reduced pressure right and another way in which you can obtain deuterium is by the electrolysis of heavy water d2o in which sodium carbonate has been dissolved so the reaction is like you can see over here d2o on electrolysis is going to liberate d2 at cathode and o2 at the anode so this is also a way in which we can obtain deuterium now uh, as far as the isotopes are concerned i hope you all remember because they have the same atomic number so they will be having same chemical properties 
right so all the isotopes they have same chemical properties but also one thing please do remember over here that there is going to be a difference in the rate of reaction of the three isotopes and this is mainly because of their different enthalpies of bond dissociation fine for example if we look at protium when this is going to react with chlorine it reacts 13.4 times faster as compared to deuterium the chemical reaction is going to remain the same it is only the rate of reaction which is differing because of the difference in the bond enthalpy values right now that there is going to be but definitely a difference in the physical properties which is due to a large mass difference so what we have learned is that the isotopes of hydrogen they will be having similar chemical properties but different physical properties right so when there is going to be a difference in the physical properties there is one more term which i want you all to remember and that is the isotopic effect so the property differences arising from the differences in mass they are called as isotopic effects and we see these isotopic effects in hydrogen because the percentage change in mass is maximum in case of the isotopes of hydrogen from protium to deuterium to tritium there is going to be a doubling and tripling of the mass whereas if we see other atom isotopes for example nitrogen n14 and n15 or carbon c12 and c14 the iso uh, the atomic masses are going to differ fractionally whereas in case of hydrogen it is a doubling and tripling of the atomic mass so we are seeing the isotopic effect in the isotopes of hydrogen please do remember this what is isotopic effect and where is it seen commonly it is seen in the isotopes of hydrogen now there are certain more uh, terms which i want you to remember over here first is that h2 this is called as diprotium fine so h2 if it is simply written this is called as diprotium h positive that is a hydrogen atom after the loss of an electron the positive cation this is called as proton because after the loss of one electron what is left behind one proton fine the term dihydrogen when we are using the term dihydrogen this refers to the isotopic mixture of with natural abundance of h2 and d2 and there is another term that you have to learn over here that is hydron what is hydron it is used for the isotopic mixture of h positive d positive and t positive so please do remember these as well diprotium proton dihydrogen hydron so that would be it as far as the learning part is concerned but we are still not finished you have to attempt five questions which are going to be very important for a recap of the lecture right so please do put your answers in the comment section so that also i come to know how you are learning with me the first question we have this is from je mains 2019 as i was telling you that questions have come in je mains 2019 as well as 20 from this topic so i am giving you those questions over here so the first question asked in the je mains 2019 was the isotopes of hydrogen they are tritium and protium only protium and deuterium only protium deuterium and tritium or deuterium and tritium only very simple question you just have to have the names of the isotopes known to you right so the next question which was asked again in the je mains 2019 this was the total number of isotopes of hydrogen and the number of radio is radioactive isotopes among them respectively are 3n1 3n2 2n1 2 and 0 now the third question i have for you is the notation of h12 stands for protium heavy hydrogen deuterium tritium now if you look at the choices you should be able to get that this is a multi correct answer there are going to be more than one choices which are going to be correct the fourth question which i have is determine the total number of neutrons in the three isotopes of hydrogen so the choices are 1 2 3 4 and this was the question the only question asked from hydrogen in the j means 2020 january examination fine so the last question which i have is that the isotopes of hydrogen differ in the rates of chemical reactions due to different bond in 
dissociation enthalpies, different electronic configurations, different chemical properties, different atomic masses. So very simple lecture, very simple questions. Please put your answers in the comment section before leaving. Now that would be all for this lecture and the next lecture is going to be on the different forms of hydrogen. We will be talking about for example atomic hydrogen, nascent hydrogen. This is something which is going to be an advanced level learning for you. All those students who are interested in getting high scores in JE Advance, please do not miss the next lecture on these different forms of hydrogen. And for that, if you have not subscribed to the channel till now, please do subscribe to the channel H2 Chemistry. Click on the bell icon so that you get a notification the moment we put up the next lecture for you. Any doubts, they are most welcome. Put them in the comment section along with the answers obviously to the multiple choice questions. And more, if you do not want to put your doubts in the comment section, you can always mail them to us at h2chemistry at gmail.com. We will be glad to help you all. We do revert back within 24 to 48 hours. So see you again. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thank you.